Hello friends, so welcome back to the course on employment communication. Today we will be doing lecture 8 and this is a new topic called intercultural communication. We will introduce you to intercultural communication in lecture 8. So, I have divided this introductory lecture on intercultural communication in two parts. The words on the slide there uh, look similar and they are meant to be such. The first part is communicating interculturally and the second part is cross cultural communication. So, I think the only difference is inter and cross and I do not think we have much of objection to using these terms inter and cross. So, basically I will be building your foundations on intercultural communication in this lecture 8. So, why this topic? And this topic because of two reasons mainly the global marketplace. The globe has become a village and people from different cultures are working all over the world wherever they are able to get job and working through. And the second aspect is go to any office today, let us say in India itself in a metro town or in a small town or Mofasil town and you will find that there are people from different cultures working together. Even if they are not working face to face in a four wall structure or an office as such or cubicle or a project, let us say that we are thinking about those people who are also working across the digital divide that is through web conferencing and video communication. These are people of different cultures. So, multicultural workforce and global marketplace is the, these are the two reasons why we need to be interculturally updated. So, there is uh, this idea of intercultural sensitivity and we will be telling in greater depth on these three terms on the slide here culture, subculture and ethnocentrism, but as of now culture is the central term here. Culture is a system of beliefs, values, attitudes, behaviors, artifacts, our eating styles, our living lifestyles, our cultural festivals, our festivities, our holidays, how we sit, stand, dress up, everything as such. And subculture is a part of the main culture. Say for example, I tell you that the main culture of, we talk about the Indian culture. Now, India as such is divided into two parts culturally, let us say the northern part is the Aryan culture and the lower part, the southern parts of the nation is the, is the Dravidian culture. So, these two Aryan culture and Dravidian culture are the subcultures of India. Ethnocentrism is a term which we define as to be concentrated on oneself. So, the idea of ethnocentrism is that to think about your culture as superior and rest of the cultures as not material, inferior rather. So, ethnocentrism or ethnocentrism is to be avoided at any cost. Now, what are the kind of cultural differences you might face at the workplace? The first is context or situation based, the second is the way in which our legal framework and our ethical standards are here let us say in India is different from the way the legal framework and the ethical standards are there in some other country even if it is our next door country. The third is the social because man is a social animal. So, the social society is one of the big ways in which cultures differ from each other and fourth is most important non-verbal communication. We have already done uh, two lectures on non-verbal communication, but we will also be doing it at greater depth in two more lectures on body language. So, cultural context if we come to cultural context the decision making practices of people who work in different cultures are separate, unique from each other. Their problem solving techniques also are different. So, some people may count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, some may count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and some may count 1, 2, 
3, 4, 5. I am just giving an example, I am not telling that this is a problem solving technique, but I am telling you that uh, even in such minor things as counting 1 to 5, we differ. The last year is on the slide, on the slide is negotiation, negotiating styles. At the workplace, most of the work is successful because people are able to negotiate and negotiating styles differ, differ from culture to culture. Coming next to the second aspect of legal and ethical behavior of different cultures, the idea is to seek common ground. If you are working in a foreign country and you have to uh, be legally safe and ethically good, uh, try to get the, bo the, the common aspect from their culture, so that you can act upon it more easily, because it is common to your culture or the culture you come from, from which uh, your background is. The second is to withhold judgment, where you think that uh, you are not sure, you are not confident and you are among people of different culture, better not to speak, not to say anything. The third is to send honest messages, you know that honesty is the best policy. So, the best way to, to face a situation, let us say that uh, we have three ways to face a situation, white, flight, freeze. But here I would say the best way is to be honest with whatever you are communicating verbally as well as non-verbally, whether the message is verbal plus non-verbal. The fourth is of course, uh, needs no explanation why, why it is so important, we must respect cultural differences if we are to survive and flourish at the workplace. Let us come to the third aspect of social behavior differences. You see that any society is built on materialism, but the extent to which people of different cultures are materialistic is different from country to country. Let us move further to roles, the roles into which society casts in, in a masculine or a male oriented society, the roles for the women would be lower, diminutive, weak, not important. On the other hand, if we think about a matriarchal society, let us say I give you the example of Nepal or let us say deep down south we have Kerala. In matriarchal society, the roles of the women are important and up, they are regarded with much respect in society and they are given greater roles in performance. Then you come to status and we have manners, the way in which we observe etiquette the way in which we mind our P's and Q's. This is different from different cultures, because the paradigm or the, we are talking about one level on which cultural differences occur, which is social behavior. Manners of different social groups differ. And the last is time. Time is very important, because in the West people are very punctual and they value time, they respect time. Whereas, in our part of the world, we have an attitude of uh, it is all right, uh, people come late for meetings because they think that uh, it increases their importance. And even when the meeting is going on, if you observe, then people will give lot of introduction, have some social conversation and then come to the main business to be discussed. When we come to non-verbal communication, the fourth one, let us talk about personal space. We will be showing you a video in which you will see an, uh, a Pakistani lady and uh, she is a student and the teacher is a uh, Londoner or uh, Westerner. And uh, in India, we have minimum personal space at the workplace or even in the family depending on the intimacy of the relationship. But in the West, this is not so. When you see the video, you will understand the significance of what I am trying to tell you now. Body language is a very important part of non-verbal communication. We have reserved two lectures on that coming soon. So, how do we overcome ethnocentrism? I have said that there are these four ways by which we are studying intercultural communication. 
and a negative part of intercultural communication is ethnocentrism where people or communities or cultures believe that their cultures are superior and the rest of the cultures are inferior or not to be recognized or given any importance. This does not happen, this does not work as such, it will never work. So, how do we overcome ethnocentrism? First by acknowledging that just as my, just as my culture is unique, so also their culture is distinct. The second is to avoid assumptions that okay, so, so and so is doing this, 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 so it might mean this, this, this and therefore, we avoid judgments. Now, it is a time as you see in this slide, it is a time when most students would like to work abroad. Not that we do not have jobs in India, but uh, we would like to work abroad if possible. So, this is for those who are who are attempting to work abroad. The first of the seven advices for those who are planning to work abroad is the first is to assume differences, to acknowledge distinctions. The second to take responsibility for your culture and where you come from and yourself as such. The third it has already been said to withhold judgment where you think the area is grey, where you think it is not safe or correct or right or ethical to say something. Number four is show respect to all cultures other than yours. Number five very important empathize. Empathy is a higher form of sympathy. So, we are requesting you to develop empathy. And the last on this slide is to tolerate ambiguity, because just like non-verbal communication, intercultural communication is ambiguous. So, we have to accept it and tolerate it as part and parcel of life. We continue, it is imperative that you learn to look beyond the superficial, do not look at the upper meanings or whatever appears to the eyes or appears to the mind at first glance. Be patient, be persistent in what sense? Be persistent to increase your knowledge of cultural variations and differences where you are working and admit cultural biases. If, if I am an Indian and uh, if I say or speak biased towards India, I must be able to admit that I am speaking or working or saying such because I am an Indian and I am therefore, pro Indian. And the last is to remain flexible. We move further, if you are going to work abroad the next five advices would be to begin with to look for common ground where you have cultural, cultural mingling I would say not to look for uncommon areas on which you can quarrel or fight or debate or whatever or which could lead to interference or loss of working hours, loss of precious time in the workplace. So, verbally as well as non-verbally you must send very clear, brief, precise, exact messages and do not think about the culture in which you are working think about the individual with whom you are working. There would be nothing more important than saying that it is you who are the best judge to decide when to be direct, but therefore, advices mostly be indirect because sometimes directness might cause inflict, it might cause tension and inflict more harm at the workplace relationships. The last one is to test your understanding of cultural awareness, to be culturally upgraded, to know about other cultures. ESL on this slide is English as a second language. For most of us who are going to be working abroad, English is not the mother tongue, except for those who are from the Anglo Indian community. Other than that, we have most of us would have English as the second language. And this in itself creates many communication barriers at the workplace. 
The first is that we have to be aware of English slang and idioms. Number, number two, what uh, we what we generally teach in the language lab in English courses is accent and pronunciation. Accent is stress and pronunciation is the correct utterance of the word with the right stress at the right place on the right syllable. So, accents and pronunciation are important of English as such. Vocal variations uh, because all the sound uh, the way we are speaking oral communication is coming through our vocal cords. Therefore, the voice quality or the vocal, vocal level of different people would be different. It is important to recognize this variations then we can be free of this barrier of vocal variations. And lastly is communication styles each human being is unique and everybody has his or her own special way of communicating or special communication styles and of this we need to be careful of. Then the idea that if you are working abroad you have to pick up on a foreign language, foreign language itself creates barriers in intercultural communication. The first is of course, you must learn the language of the country where you are going to work and if it takes time and at the workplace things have to be done, you must be able to get intermediaries or translators who will help you on the spot. And the third is you can offer training in English. Then we come to written communication apart from oral communication which we have slightly covered. These are some 8 points here and I will not uh, go in detail these all easy to understand. When we come to oral communication the first point here to be remembered is to minimize noise. If we go back to I think lecture 4 or 3 where noise is the communication barrier or the or the aspect which creates resistance in communication. So, when we speak we must work on minimizing noise or communication hiccups as such. We become better communicators if we are able to get feedback from others. We speak slowly so that since we are speaking English as a second language others can understand us is not it. And the fourth point here is to clarify or to make clear your intention in saying whatever you are saying. The next point here is do not look down upon, do not be pejorative or uh, treating the others in a condescending manner. Do not talk down to others at the workplace, I mean those who belong to other cultures. And the last is to be specific or exact. We continue further, since you will be working abroad learn foreign phrases of daily parlance of daily requirement for example, where is this bus going to, where is the train going to where can I get uh, bread or butter or uh, when is the tea time, when is the break time, when is the movie show starting so on and so forth, so that you can survive. Be careful while listening because I think listening leads to great learning. The third point here is to adapt your style, your communication style might have been like an Indian, but once you go abroad and you are going to work there for a long time have some minor changes included in your communication styles. Fourth, I think uh, we need to paraphrase whatever we have uh, heard or we are not clear with what we have understood. There is a need to paraphrase so that you check your understanding of what is being said. Think about the next step and most important last but not the least I would say Take care of your body language as we have already said in the lectures on nonverbal communication. Verbal communication can be controlled and checked, but nonverbal communication or in the larger aspect, in the most important aspect, the body language. Body language is also going to be a series of two lectures soon. Body language is something which cannot be hidden. So, be careful how you are 
behaving non-verbally. I would like you to see this uh, funny video on non-verbal and uh, intercultural communication. <laughs> well, I am pleased to meet you all. We are also pleased to be meeting you. <laughs> I am Brown. Oh no! <laughs> you are committing a mistake. A mistake? Yes, please. You are not brown. We are brown. You are white. Uh, my name is Brown. I am your teacher. Ah, you yes. professor! Yes. Well, I am speaking to students. What? Please, Chinese. Silencio! Thank you. Right. Uh, would you all like to sit down? Sit down. I ah, so hard. <laughs> right. I'll uh, just uh, take a note of all your names, nationalities, and occupations. Right. Por favor, señor. Yes? Es la primera vez que vengo. Es esta la clase para aprender inglés. But I have the faintest idea what you're saying, but I'm sure you're not trying to find the needlework, Clark. Por favor. It doesn't matter. Have a seat. Por favor. Sit down. Ah, sí. <laughs> No, not there. Por favor. There. Ah, yeah. Right, I'll just go around the class and uh, take your names. Yes? Ah, oh, yes. What is your name? Maximilian Andrea Archimedes Papandrei. Uh, I think I'll just put you down as Max. Uh, take it your Greek? He is right, from Athens. Good. And what is your job? Uh, I walk with sheep. <laughs> You walk with sheep. For a shepherd, you work on a farm. Uh, no, no, not farm. But you just said you work with sheep. No, 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 no. Sheeps. Big sheeps. Woof! 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 Sheeps. Yes, sheeps. Tonkers. 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 Right. Um, I walk in office. Thank you. And your name? Anna Schmidt, German au pair. Ah. Usual German efficiency? Germans are always efficient. Not a... So. <laughs> Japanese, much more efficient. Nine Germans are the best. Japanese make a much better television. And do? Camelos. <laughs> now, please, let us have no racialism. In this class, all are equal. Your name? Giovanni Cupello, Italian. And where do you work? I work in Ristorante dei Popoli. A waiter? No, not a waiter, a cucuta. <laughs> cucuta? Si, a cucuta ravioli, a cucuta spaghetti, a cucuta lasagna, a cucuta everything. A chef. Okay. And your name? Andy? What is your name? Kya uh, Me, Jeremy Brown. You. Patan, ji kya keh rahe ho? Max, Anna Schmidt, Giovanni Cupello, you. Oh, आप नाम पूछ रहे हो अच्छा मैं लिख देती हूँ लिखती हूँ एक मिनट फिक्र ना करो जी लिखना पढ़ना आता है अच्छा It's no good. I need your name in English. No Urdu? No Urdu. 
हाय तो मैं यहाँ का के लिए आई अंग्रेजी आती होती तो मैं सीखने आती अंग्रेजी कोई आपको क्या चाहिए अब मुझे पता नहीं कहाँ से लाऊं मैं पता नहीं क्या चाहिए आपको देखो जी सही लिखा हुआ होगा अंग्रेजी तो पता नहीं देखो ये तो नहीं कहीं कागज जो आपको चाहिए सर्टिफिकेट रजिस्ट्रेशन सो why i showed you this video is at the end of the first part of this introductory lecture i wanted you to understand that culture is not only your racial ethnicity or your ethnic background or your national identity it is also the language you speak the way you speak your touching behaviors your intimacy your personal space you may maintain between yourselves as workers or family members so anyway let's move to part 2 cross cultural communication or communication across cultures why this is an important topic today needs to be dealt with at the outset the first is that technological advances have made the workplace very go very much a global we have already mentioned this global marketplace the second is we need to understand why we are using or buying a company's products or service or why we need to design something which will fit our customers needs successful communication improves productivity and creates a comfortable good workplace and in case you are lucky enough to work in a multicultural workplace you are really in fact uh, lucky i would say because this would enrich your business as well as personal life there are certain problems and solutions which need to be considered when cross cultural communication occurs at the workplace and we have divided them on three parts the first is cultural differences the second are problems which are language based and the third is we will be offering some solutions for improved communication so coming to the first one problems of cultural differences these are of three parts body positions and movement in a multicultural workplace what are our attitudes towards factors of human relationship and the effect of the effect of all this on workplace communication we will be telling it in detail if we think about body positions and movement there are certain body parts which you are not supposed to touch of the other in public at the workplace gestures are very important the way you gesticulate with your hands and arms eye contact or gaze is the next one which has to be taken care of and learnt to be effective at the workplace which is multicultural how do you shake hands and what are your touching behaviors at the workplace is last i will display this in this chart where some gesture differences across different nations are different i will do the first and last only this gesture of hand up palm out wrist stiff back and forth movement is good by in america but this same movement is no in america in europe sorry if we come to thumbs up this one with this means fine or good going everything is okay in america but on the other side in say countries like nigeria and australia this is strongly negative it is sexual and it is insulting non verbal or gesture communication what are the attitudes towards factors of human relationship we need to take care of first is how do we value time are we punctual or not punctual do we respect time do we value time these are questions you must ask yourself the second is space how much is the minimum respectable distance or space you maintain with workers at the workplace the second is odors the third one odors uh, in the workplace some of us are used to spraying perfume and coming to the workplace because they do not want their body odor to be reaching others who are all working in the same cubicle or project in sitting in close proximity to each other how frank number 4 how frank or how much open you should be at the workplace with others how much intimate in your relationships what ethics you hold what are your values 
what are your philosophies which dictate you and how do you express emotions. What is the effect of all this you know body movements, body parts and movements and in the previous slide our attitudes towards factors of human relationships on the workplace communication. There are some generalizations here I will not ask you to hold it to your heart. American communication techniques are not universally acceptable. It is acceptable in America rest of the world will have their variations and these techniques may not work with all English speaking people just because America speaks English and the rest of the world. Many countries in the rest of the world US, Canada, Australia, New Zealand and United Kingdom all of them are English speaking, but their communication techniques will be different from the American communication techniques even if the language is one which is English. So, such kind of problems whether it is communication techniques or whatever can be overcome by learning about other cultures. Let us say we begin with language because language has been defined as a means of communication. The first thing we remember to, to in fact most important is lack of language equivalency. Our language will not have the exact language equivalent of some other language, it is very difficult. And when it comes to English as a second language users and speakers like we are Indians, then there are certain difficulties in using English at the workplace. The first is multiple meanings of words, the second two word verbs and we will show you examples, the third is culturally derived words. Moving first, let us say if you are speaking about uh, language equivalency problems, there might be no same word for what word you are using in your part of the world. For example, the Japanese have several words to define fine shadings of dependence, obligations, responsibility. They may have seven words for a relationship called uncle, is not it. Next, sometimes there is no need for word. For example, the Eskimos or the people who have the language Inuit Inuit have uh, in the Inuit language Inuit there are many words for snows because they stay in snow throughout the year maybe 10 months, 12 months and they have many types of snow for example, flaky snow, soft snow, hard snow, rocky snow. So, they have at least let us say 19 words for one word which we term as snow and sometimes grammatically, syntactically that is you know that grammar and syntax apart from vocabulary are the three parts of language. Re language has three parts vocabulary, grammar, syntax. So, let us leave apart vocabulary which is diction or words. But syntactically and grammatically the equivalent forms may not be found between two languages. Here on this slide we have an example of three words run, fast and ring and run the word might have multiple meanings to go for a run is only one. Now let us come to substitutes for two word verbs. For example, these are some two word verbs on the left hand side of the slide and the substitutes are here. It is uh, very difficult to understand that substitutes are implying these two word verbs. We may have heard of track down and tie down, shut out, but we may not have heard of put away or live down or cut up which means clown. So, there is a need also the last point is to avoid culturally derived words like slang expressions and uh, words which have been taken from the arena of sports, computer science, these three areas should not be transported to our daily language. Idioms and colloquialisms need to be avoided because they are culturally bound. Some American idioms to avoid are given in this slide and I will not go into the details of 
what they mean, but the only advice is to avoid these. Next we come to the third aspect, the third part, some tips for communicating across cultures successfully. The first it is slightly repetitive also to talk and write as simply and plainly and clearly as possible with your power and control over language. When you are going to put questions across to somebody from other culture, there are three things to be noted. The first to avoid double questions, to have two separate questions instead of one question after another, to avoid close ended questions which are yes no type of questions or which can be answered by yes or no. So, number two avoid close ended questions, number three is to avoid negative questions. Since you are not proficient with the language which is something different from which is totally different from your language therefore, there are two ways in which you can continuously confirm whether you are linguistically on the same plane with the other who has a different language. Use back translation when possible and use technology to assist with written and oral communication. Nowadays, we have many softwares and applications which assist you with written and oral communication of different languages. Here on this slide, uh, I am just advising you that in case you are going to go abroad for work, uh, you can surf across such websites and learn foreign languages in short time. First is to select the language you speak and then try to learn it online. Online learning or self learning is the shortest way to pick up a language before you reach abroad to your workplace. And this slide shows some of the common words which are used in France for English yes, oui, for no, non, for thank you, mercy, so on and so forth. So, this has a list of common uh, words which you use day in and day out and which can make you settle in in your new workplace. Let us say it is France for example. These are few of the references I have used in preparation of this uh, topic. Thank you and we shall be meeting you soon.